Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this 13th Sunday after Pentecost. Good to see everybody. I thought I heard a flute and I was like, where's that flute? So it was just kind of interesting. <laughs> um, just a few announcements as we gather this morning. First of all, thank you for everybody who stayed last Sunday for our semi-annual meeting. It was good to see everybody and have some input remember that we are having um, another gathering on september 14th it's all in the announcements but just want to keep that in front of you and also would invite you next week if you have kids or grandkids in your family who are going back to school in a couple weeks we're going to have a blessing of the backpacks next week and have a focus a little bit of focus on um, kids going back to school have tags for their backpacks and what I call some swag that means different things for parents to use with their kids throughout the school year and it's for you know any kids that are going back to school we just want to have a chance to to bless and um, ask for God's provision for this coming year for both the students and for faculty and for parents <laughs> um, so invite you to be there we um, bring kids so that we can have that focus next Sunday. I think those are the things I made little notes about, but are there things you all would like to share with one another this morning? Okay, then. I invite you to take just a few moments to prepare your hearts for worship.
I invite you to stand as you are able. Please join me in the confession and forgiveness. Trusting in the word of life given to us in baptism, we are gathered in the name of the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished by Jesus, the worker of miracles. There is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. We join in our opening hymn, which is, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. For the liturgy that we'll use today, we're using setting four from the ELW, and we start with the hymn of praise, This is the Feast. This is my part.
Let us pray. Ever-loving God, your Son gives himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated. So good morning, all. Glad to have you all here with us on this lovely day. So the first reading is Proverbs 9, 1 through 6. And in this reading, wisdom is personified as a female. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come, eat my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So our psalm today is 34, 9 through 14. It begins like this. Fear the Lord, you saints of the, of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you reverence for the Lord. Who among you takes pleasure in life and desires long life to enjoy prosperity? So keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. So here ends the wording, the first reading, and the psalm. The Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I am them. Just as the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. So let's start out with a question this morning. What are some of your earliest memories of the faith? Okay, this is the quietest it's been there. So you have no memories. Today is the first time you ever heard of Christianity, huh? Jan. Are you asking that question? Yes. That's why I said we're starting now with a question. <laughs> That, has Lord, that, that your mom, mom saying the Lord's Prayer, prayer with you when you were a little girl. girl. Excellent. Excellent, yes. 
Yeah, not literally, but close. Mesmerize. We got it. I remember those, yeah. Karen. Well, since my dad was a pastor and my mom played the organ, I had to sit in the front seat and my brother will go walk in. And my brother was home from college one time. He was 17 years old. And Ooh, um, was right up the church, he hustled me back to the parking lot, stuck me in a closet, gave me a stool, gave me First memories, or I mean, maybe not first, but early memories. Alan, I saw that hand first. Uh, oh, wow. All three of you together kneeling. Interesting. And Judy, I really think I saw you. Oh. Your mom being a junior choir director. Did that mean you were in the choir? Oh, of course. Just checking that out. And I saw another hand over here. Oh, Jeff. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you ever get hit by a tornado? Uh, close. Oh. Yeah. Church basements, they serve many purposes. <laughs> Other folks. No excuses every Sunday, yep. I like kind of like Eleanor, you were talking about, you know, saying prayers every night. That's my probably my earliest memory, not not with three sisters, because they didn't have three sisters. But mom sitting on my bed and praying, now I lay me down to sleep every single night. And asking for God's blessing on everything from, you know, toys to mom and dad to lunch the next day. I don't ever remember going to church, though. I don't remember going to church until I was in about the second grade or so. But I did attend a kindergarten at the Lutheran church where my brother went to school. And we always met in the basement. (laughs) Like I said, basement's multi-purpose and we'd go up if not every day at least a couple times a week up into the real church you know the sanctuary (laughs) 
and we'd have what I'm sure they called a service. I didn't know what it was. I was like five and a half, six years old. And we'd sing songs and pray, and a pastor would come in and do something, and then we'd go off to play. And I remember not wanting to leave that space. It wasn't that I didn't want to play, but for some reason I felt like I needed to be there. For me, that was church. I didn't call it that. It was just part of school, and I liked school. When we moved to the suburbs the next year, um, I started going to church because of Vacation Bible School, because the Baptist church had a bus, and they came around and got people. And so my neighbors and I, we all went to Vacation Bible School at this American Baptist church a ways away. And, I, and the bus ran on Sundays, so I also took the bus on Sundays and went to church even when they didn't. And that was all well and good. And the way that church operated is they'd start out with everybody together, and then the kids would get, to get dismissed to children's church, and then they would come back near the end and everybody would go home. Great. I tried children's church a couple times, didn't like it, so I stayed in real church. And that was okay until one Sunday they changed when the bus ran, but didn't tell me. So I stayed in regular church and get dismissed. I go out, no bus. As I watched the parking lot get less and less and less cars and no bus coming, Finally, somebody came up to me and asked who I was waiting for, and I told them the bus. And they go, well, the bus has already gone. It's already taken everybody home. They leave right after children's church. Okay. Somebody else, I don't remember who, don't remember how, but somehow my parents got called. And my dad came and got me because my mom worked night shifts, so she was sleeping. And suffice it to say, that was the last Sunday I ever went to church. <laughs> he was not pleased that he had to come and get me. Lynn, like you said, going to church every Sunday, even though I didn't, most of my friends did, because in my mind, that was something you did every Sunday, even if my family didn't. Because remember, this is the 60s, way higher church participation than we have these days. And if it weren't for those people in my life that shared Jesus' story with me, I can't imagine where I'd be today and maybe you are the same way. Now, am I exactly like any of them or any of the many different churches I've attended, not all of which have been Lutheran? <laughs> no, I'm not exactly like any of them. But each is a little part of me one way or another. And would any of them, including the ELCA, say I'm living exactly as they teach? Not hardly. But I will always, first and foremost, be a child of God and a follower of Jesus. And he's the only one I care to please. Follower of Jesus, a disciple. It starts with hearing the story. Because none of us come out of the womb knowing about Jesus. Someone has to share that story with you. And each of us hears it a little bit differently. I have friends like some of you who can't even remember when they didn't know Jesus. And I have a friend and a colleague who we started in ministry together in Illinois who didn't come to faith until he was like 40 years old. He'd grown up in the country, farmed, really active in community and 4-H and everything else that you would think about in the middle of country. This was in southern Illinois. But church was never part of his life. Then through a series of events and people, he finally heard the gospel story and came to faith. Talking to Ed as a new pastor, because we went through theological education together, was like a breath of fresh air. You could feel the Holy Spirit pulsing in him because his faith was still so very new. He'd only been a person of faith about four or five years before he entered seminary. 
Ed was a fabulous small town pastor. He retired about five, six years ago, and now they're biking all over the country. But he came to faith because somebody shared the story with him. As we continue in this bread of life reading in John 6 this summer, the bread that I've chosen to focus on today to help us think about what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus is a bread called challah. If you see it spelled, it's usually spelled C-H-A-L-L-A-H or sometimes H-A-L-L, but it's challah. It's a ch in, in Greek. It's a Jewish bread. It's a braided bread. And it reminds us that we live in a much bigger story, that we are a people who have been telling this story for every, ever. Challah is a bread that is used on special occasions, like the Shabbat or on Jewish holidays, other than Passover because it has stuff in it you can't have during Passover. Yeah, and depending upon which tradition made it, it has three, six, or 12 braids in it. And whoever is making it has a reason why it has three, six, or 12 braids in it. Now, the challah that I had intended to use today for, for communion was, a gluten -free, from, was gluten free from a deli, a gluten free deli in New York City that had a specialized Jewish cuisine center. And then I bought backup just in case it didn't get here from New York. <laughs> when it came, unfortunately, it was frozen, and it said to keep it froze till you were ready to use it. So I did, put it in the freezer, took it out yesterday, took one of the loaves, broke it this morning, and it all crumbled. As often happens with frozen bread. And I kept trying to pinch it to get it to work together, and I ended up with stuff all over my desk, and I go, we can't do this. So we're using the backup bread, and I'll talk about that more later. But anyways, when the bread came, there were two loaves in each of the two packages that I got. And I thought, huh? What's that about? So turn to the Internet. Why did I get two packages of bread? What I discovered was that because challah is usually used for special occasions, that it comes in twos, and it is served in two bread at a time. It turns out that in Jewish tradition, the three Shab um, Sabbath meals, Friday night, Saturday lunch, and Saturday late afternoon, and the, excuse me, the two holiday meals, one at night and one for lunch the following day, each begin with two loaves of bread to remind folks of the, that this double loaf of the manna that fell from heaven and it didn't ever fall on the Sabbath, so they got a double portion the day before so that it would last for two days, but other than that, it wouldn't last. So challah, when used in ceremonies, is always a double loaf to remind them of this, the story, the Exodus story, the story of God's provision. But you only had to eat one at the meal. It wasn't like you had to consume it all. So we'll have hala, and we did have two, but we don't today. Again, it reminds us that somewhere along the way, someone shared a story with us. Now, I know it's real easy when we read some of these in the midst of these bread of life discourses where Jesus says, well, you know, your ancestor Moses ate the bread in the wilderness and they all died. And it's easy to think, oh, well, then that makes we don't have to pay any attention to that. That Jesus is somehow discounting them, but he's not, not in the very least. The Exodus is the quintessential event of our Jewish Hebrew ancestors. And just because Jesus throughout life, death and resurrection, is the center of our story, doesn't mean that the Exodus and Moses aren't important. They are. They are the witness to the power of God working in the world. 
They contain God's promise, that promise of deliverance and inclusion, freedom and salvation. It is the Moses story that Jesus would have heard as he grew up. Every time they went to the temple to make the required sacrifices, when they gathered at the synagogue, it would be the story that he heard and participated in and recited each year at the Passover. Jesus doesn't do away with the ancestral story. He builds on it. And he shows how the same God who provided for your ancestors in Egypt and throughout the wilderness is now taking a step further and fulfilling those promises so that you might not only be nourished in your desert places, but nourished and tend into eternal life. It's one large God story into which you are being invited through me, Jesus says in a greater and more intimate way. God gives you more than just manna and quail. We give you my body and my blood, my flesh, for always, that you might inherit eternal life. That you will be raised up on the last day. It's such an incredible story that Jesus told, an extravagant promise he made. Some weren't ready to hear it or handle it. Some thought he was a kook. Some had doubts. And some believed. But they all had something to tell. And those who believed told it often. Hala reminds us that we do not stand alone in our faith. This wasn't something somebody thought up a few years ago and thought they'd see if they could get maybe a few suckers to believe them. You know these humans, they'll buy anything these days. And the truth be told, there are religions out there that do that. Human conceived, human fed. Hala reminds us, that the one who is our living bread has stood in the footsteps of history from even before time began. He has walked not just the dusty roads of Galilee, but also in the muddy waters of the Nile and the Euphrates, as well as the Jordan and those streams that flow in paradise. He was there when the divine breath brought forth creation, as well as in that first breath by someone like Lazarus, whose story began anew. This bread of life who is Jesus is the living way God is at work now in the world. Not instead of, but in addition to what has come before. Hala reminds us that we are part of a very big story, God's story. And it's continuing to unfold. We are as much a part of those grumbling folks in the wilderness as we are of those for whom God provided. Our yearning may not be next year in Jerusalem, as the Passover story says, but it is for that life of the world to come, promised because of Jesus' resurrection. And both are part of the story we tell. And Hollow reminds us to tell our story, to break the bread often and to share the hope that is within us, to remember, to see our connection and to proudly live them out so that others might hear and see and come to believe that God might be adding a new braid to that bread. Part of discipleship is sharing God's story and how your story dances with it and what it means as you live out your faith. And it, clear, it includes those times when you felt the pain of separation and death, isolation, 
But then how Jesus, that living bread, stepped into your story and led you in a way that allowed you to truly believe and live again. And it means that if you need to experience that, hang out with those people who know the story and can help you hear it exactly as you need to. For you see, Christ is still at work so that you can dance with him forever because God's story includes you. So we come today knowing who we are and whose we are, ready not only to share our story, but to be amazed at the breadth of the story God is weaving right now and inviting us to be part of. May we always walk in the insight that God gives us. Please pray with me. Eternal God, when we dare to open ourselves up to your story, we're blown away by its vastness. And sometimes we want to make it so small because we can handle it then. And then we argue about the small details rather than enter into a new way you are unfolding. Forgive us when we refuse to walk in the way of your insight. Place your story not only in our hearts but on our lips so that we readily share it, model it, and live it out. And we so are so thankful for those who have come before us in the faith, who told their story to us, so that we might come to faith in you. We ask all things, O oh God, as they're in accord with your will, as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. To stand as you are able as we share our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed this day. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We turn our hearts to prayer this day, remembering that first lesson as God of wisdom and praying for God's wisdom upon all. God of wisdom, you have built a house. Empower your church to be a house of wisdom for all who enter. May we continue to grow and stretch in ways we never thought possible. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Wise God, we pray for creation and the harvests that continue to happen around us and in our part of the world. May all be fed with your bounty, and may those who work the fields be safe as they labor. And where crops have failed this year, heal the land and provide for those who have lost their way of making a living. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of wisdom, be with all who seek adequate employment or are struggling with what their next steps might be. May your wise discernment help them find their purpose and their passion. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Wise God, we pray that you would make your presence known to all who feel lost, abandoned, or who are hurting. Direct your spirit of care to those who seek healing and comfort. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of wisdom, help our congregation to be that welcome table for all who seek refuge in you. And may we set that table where all feel free to come and be part of the community. Break down any walls or barriers that exist, especially those we're not aware of. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Holy Wisdom, you have journeyed with your people throughout history. We give you thanks for those people of faith who have gone before us, who shared their story, and who now rest in you. May we continue to tra travel your wise past, trusting the witness that has been passed on to us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I would invite you to share a sign of peace with those around you.
I would invite you to stand as you are able. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set table for yourself and called us the feast of the plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right to give you thanks and praise, O God, in the company of those who live with integrity, for you have given yourself to us through becoming the bread that nourishes us for eternal life. Your righteousness was established even before time began, and all you have created reflects your glory and majesty. You made a covenant with your people and gave them generously, gave yourself generously to all who would seek your wisdom and walk in your ways. In your great and steadfast love, you have come to redeem your people, offering us life in your Son, Jesus. Through his body, his blood, through his blood poured out and his flesh sent to the grave, you raised him up to new life. And now he gives himself to us as the true bread of heaven, so that all who eat and drink of him might have eternal life and be raised up on that last day. And so with the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy. on the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The things of God for the gathered people of God. Come, taste and see that the Lord is good invite congregation to be seated. Um, just a few words about communion this morning. The challah bread that we can use this morning is not gluten-free. So if you would prefer gluten-free, we'll have the wafers. That person helping serve that will be next to me. Or if you just don't want bread that I've touched, or you would prefer to, to commune with wafers, please go to our first communion assistant and um, because we want the table to be open to all. And then proceed to our second communion assistant who will have the wine and grape juice in small cups. Pick up one, whichever you're most comfortable with, and then place those cups in the containers as you go back by the side aisles. As, Je as God fed all in the wilderness and Jesus fed all who came, so his table is open to all. Come and be nourished by the living bread. Come down from heaven.
gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I fate I dread, I know I am forgiven, the future is sure, the price it has been paid, for Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon, and he was raised to overthrow the grave, to this I hold. chains are released I can sing I am free and not I but through Christ in me with every breath I long to follow Jesus for he has said that he will bring me home and day by day, I know he will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. All the glory evermore to him. When the race is complete,
I invite you to stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we can ask. As you've nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with our own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. We close sing, singing together hymn 641, All Are Welcome. Let us build a house where enough is Yeah.